Welcome to the Delmarva Almanac. Each week, we connect you to the best of Delmarva. I'm your host, Dana Kester McCabe. This week on our show, we'll meet painter John Davis Held. We'll hear the story of Ocean City's lady entrepreneurs, and naturalist Jim Rapp will tell us about humpback whales off of our Atlantic coast. John Davis Held will be the featured artist at the Ocean City Center for the Arts during the month of August. He and I met recently when he told me about being raised in Manhattan in a family that had an appreciation for fine art. John's wide-ranging academic career included studies in astrophysics and computer science. John lived in a ceremonial hut that he helped build while taking an anthropology course in African hut building and sorcery at the California Institute of the Arts. From time to time, John writes software for some side money, but art has always been his passion. He began with watercolors, but much of his work has been painted with pastels. I, I took pastels. That, something really hit with me. Like, like the moment I did a pastel, I, I, it was literally like over 20 years before I even touched watercolors again. And then oil painting is something I've been doing more and more of. And so, like for instance, the, the show at the Art League of um, Ocean City, it's maybe half oils and half pastels. They'll see a lot of skies. They'll also see some beautiful still lifes, um, which are all done in oil, and some figurative pieces too, but meaning they're not portraits, um, they're not figure studies, but they're some interesting you know, people that I've painted. John has done commissioned portraits along with other projects, but he has a reputation for elegant landscapes. Well, I'm known for my skies, and skies are very difficult to paint. You can look at a lot of paintings and museums, and the skies generally are sort of the worst part of the painting, and I found it fascinating. Uh, For myself, skies is a chance to really work with light and color and a lot of Um, glazing effects and atmospheric effects that um, I just don't get tired of. I used to use photographic references quite a bit and I actually gave it up for a number of years. I found they just slowed me down because when I'm working on a piece there's some sort of magic that just takes over and and this is what I'm after. Suddenly I'll find the light I'm looking for in a piece or I'll go oh my goodness this is what needs working on. And at that point, the piece just sort of works. Um, Certainly for my landscapes and my skies, I I rarely use references. Uh, With still lifes, there I'll I'll take some photographic references and I'll I'll work, but it's still the same process. Uh, Right now I'm working on a piece that was going to be just ocean and sky. And all of a sudden I could sort of see these gorgeous, like the mist on the water and this, this land coming out. And I, I showed it to my wife, I was like, look at this. And of course she saw none of this. She said, well, it's a start. And um, it sometimes takes a while to be able to actually paint what I'm seeing and get the paint there to, um, to show what I have in mind or what I'm seeing. I don't believe in waiting for inspiration. What I believe is picking up a paintbrush and the inspiration is going to happen. It, it's, I can just count on it. There's going to be a moment where all of a sudden my brush is moving as fast as I can get it to move and then I'm stepping back and it's almost a dance. And you know, I trust that process. John says that it is surprisingly common for artists to give in to the temptation to tackle complex designs rather than just keeping it simple. Well, I'm reminded by Mark Twain who once wrote this long letter to a friend, and at the end he said, I'm sorry this letter's not shorter, but I didn't have the time. And I think that's really well put. It's not easy to do a really simple piece of work that's just glows and has the right stuff. Uh, Another thing which artists do is they overwork their artwork. A lot of times they keep going past that point where they've sort of lost the vividness and that that excitement and magic that was there. You have to really learn where to put the detail and the perfect little brush strokes and where you can be loose and chaos. that combination is exciting and it, it, it works. So 
yeah, I, I know what is good, and, and I, I don't always hold to it, but generally speaking, I, I know what I'm looking for. It's incredible the beauty you get out of something really simply done and really well executed with the right light that is better than anything you can do. Um, that drama from, that comes from within, that spiritual sense, is going to come out in those cases, and it takes a quietness of spirit. Um, for me, it takes being really content. I'm, I like being happily married. You know, my wife Kirsten's really important to me, and with her in my life, I can do the kind of peaceful, beautiful work that I want to be doing. Uh, it's a very spiritual practice to work on a piece. Uh, I spend so many hours with that piece and reflecting on it, and it's, to me, proof that we all have something inside of us that's really remarkable. It's really a, a spiritual practice, and I've had people, who, a couple of wives of husbands who were very seriously, seriously ill by my work because they felt like it was so peaceful and this was the piece that they wanted to hang on the wall. And they're, you know, hus you know, by their husband's bed, and they, you know, come back to me years later to to thank me for for this little gift. And actually, I donated a piece to um, the Union Memorial Hospital of work, which they have put in this room for talking to families in tough situations. Um, they, it was to thank the doctors who did a marvelous job there with with my dad. Um, and you can't thank doctors and nurses enough. They have, they have tough work. And so, so to me, it, it all works together. It's, it, it, I just, just have to say that it's a, it's a real treat to be able to stand in front of you know, a, a panel and, and work on art and, and show it to the world and have people love it and have, find spots for it in their lives. And, um, I think most artists aren't really in it for, for the money, and you, sh you shouldn't be as much as the fact that you're doing something that nobody else can do. That, that, I mean, there's other tr tremendously great artists, but if you're really hitting your stride as an artist, nobody's doing art like your own art. John's work can be seen at the Peninsula Gallery in Lewis, Delaware, and the Troika Gallery in Easton, Maryland. Well, that's all for this edition of the Delmarva Almanac. Be sure to follow us on Facebook or Twitter, and next week join us to learn more about our local culture and get connected to our natural wonders. We'd like to thank our community partners, the Friends of Delmarva Public Radio, and our underwriters for their help in bringing this program to you, our audience. If you'd like to become an underwriter for this program, visit delmarvaalmanac.com support. Our theme music was provided by Brightside Studio. This show has been a Moonshell production. Thanks for listening. Until we meet again, may the rhythms and tides of Delmarva bring you good fortune.